As I was saying, one last thing I want to show you is the final setting, which you should always consider is supports. And like I said before, we don't need to use it on this Benchy. It's kind of designed to not need supports, but I do have a model that I designed for my hydroponic garden system that does need support. So we're going to import that. And it's a good opportunity to show you, you can delete models from your build plate as well. So you can just click on any objects you have and then hit the delete key and that's going to remove it from the build plate. And now we can import our new one. So control I and it's called our hooch spike. But the important thing, if we look at this model is the underside here is going to need supports because when the printer is printing to this area, it can't just print in thin air. It needs something under it or at least work into it through an angle or shape so that it can print that surface but a flat surface in the middle of the air like this, it's not going to be able to print. So for this case, there's some settings we need to change. It doesn't need high quality. I'm not concerned with quality. So we can bump that up to a 0.24. So it's going to print a little faster. The infill, we go to our strength tab. I'm not too concerned about the infill. So I'm going to drop this down to 10%. This will again, increase the printing time just a little bit. Our infill pattern of grid is fine. I'm not too concerned about that. But the other thing is support. So we go to our support tab and we need to tick on the enable support and this will enable our support settings. Now, a lot of this you don't need to worry about, but there are a few that you'll need to change. So there are basically two types of support that are pretty well used in the 3D printing space. And if we drop that down, we have either normal or tree. You don't need to worry about the manual options. That's a more advanced thing where you can paint surfaces where you want the supports to be. The only two that you need to focus on is auto for normal or tree. So let me show you what the two different types of supports are. So we're going to put it to normal and we're going to slice this. Give it a moment. And as you can see, it's printed a lot of material on these undersides. And if you go up here, you can control the layer height for this is in the preview tab. So we can kind of see the process of how this is 3D printing. So you can see what it's doing here is it's kind of just laying down the minimum material just to build up the height. And while it's also printing the actual model on that layer as well, and it's printing up, it's printing up until it gets to about here. So then it's going to create a bit of a surface height and we can actually step through the layers by pushing up and down on the keyboard as well. So we can see here it's getting here and it skips a bit of a layer and then it starts printing the actual model again. So this kind of air gap is what allows the supports to release from the model, but it just gives it enough of something underneath to print on. Once it gets that new layer down, it will start printing again and it should do the same thing again on this outer edge. So if we keep going up, okay, just here we can see again, it's sort of laying down a base layer and then it starts printing the next model bit. And then from there on, it doesn't need any more support. So it just continues up until the top. So that's our normal supports. Now there's another type of support called tree. So if we click on that and we go auto and we slice and you're going to see these supports are completely different. So you can see here, it's actually kind of printing these little branches. So it starts off quite large and then it moves up and it starts branching off and branching off and creating all these branches. And then when it gets to where it needs to, it will print down that interface layer and then continue the model. So why would you use normal? Why would you use tree? Typically the consensus is that Normal is great for when you have a large flat surface that you need to print. And tree is really good for when you have organic models. So if you're printing a figurine or if it has contour curving surfaces that the normal straight up and down uh, normal supports isn't going to really accommodate for. Tree is great because it can kind of start from the side and then work its way up into those crevices. These days, everyone's pushing towards tree supports for almost 90% of cases you're going to use tree now. In this case though, the important thing for me is both printing time and material. So if we look here, we can see our print time is about two hours and our material is about almost 40 grams. Now, if we change that back to normal and we slice it, our print time is a little bit quicker in this case. So one hour 55, but our material is now 50 grams. So that's an extra 10 grams of material. And if I was printing a whole bunch of these, that material cost is gonna add up pretty quickly just for supports that are going to be thrown away anyway. 
and the time difference is only five minutes so it's not a huge deal for me so really tree is the best option for me and you also have some substyles for this as well so when you go into normal you have different substyles grid and snug default is like we saw the first time grid is going to give you a bit of a different pattern and snug is going to really tighten it up as much as you can so i might actually show you that quickly so if we go to normal and then snug you could see before it was quite large now this time it's really pushed itself under just those surfaces so it's really trying to snug it up nice and close and it's actually dropped the time and the filament down a bit as well now if we go to tree we have a few options in here as well so tree slim tree strong tree hybrid and organic and like always we can just either hover on this and have a quick read of the different settings or you can click on that and actually see examples and more in-depth details typically i'll go a tree slim it might offer some suggestions like zero interface layers etc do you want to change this so we can just say yes and then we can slice this and you can see now it's slimmed it up a little bit it's using a little bit less filament not much to really worry about but the printing time's reduced quite a bit as well it's now in, on par with the normal so we're going to go ahead and print this now so i can show you the process of actually removing supports as well so again we go we're happy with all our settings now we've got our layer height we've got our infill and in this case we need supports as well so we're happy with that drag that down we can see our printer is ready to go and we can go start print it's going to ask us make sure there's nothing on the build surface we know there isn't and we can send that model off so we're going to leave that to print give it a couple of hours and what i might do is because i don't actually need this model complete i just want to demonstrate the supports being printed so i'll let it print up until the support layer and then i'll show you how to cancel the print and we'll just leave it there and then i can show you how to actually remove the supports so we'll be back as soon as that's done here we can see i've cancelled the print so it's just finishing at this point as i don't need to really print the rest of it to demonstrate the support feature but you can see the supports have been printing up and they're supporting underneath these faces so that the rest of the model can print now it's finished i recommend also getting a pair of small pliers or something so we can pull these supports off otherwise to remove your print let it cool down first and then you should be able to just pop the build plate off like this a tip for helping the build plate cool quicker is to put it on a nice cool surface like the, the table next to it or something as that will soak the heat from the build plate into the surface and it will cool it down quicker you want to only remove prints when the plate has cooled down preferably to room temperature because it will not damage the surface of the build plate that way and it'll be easier to remove as well otherwise you can see it's quite secure on there at the moment but these are flexible build plates so what you normally do is you just bend it give it a bend in the other direction and then it should just pop off like that you can then put the build plate back on and it's magnetic so simply line it up with the back points here and then drop and then just check that the sides are aligned and the back is aligned and it'll be ready to go for the next time so if we get a nice close look here you can see all the supports just touching the bottom here and the supports on this side so we're going to start removing these and you should just be able to pull it away with your hands but if it is a little bit too hard, like I said, you can just use some pliers and just get in here and just give it a bit of a twist and a pull back and forward. Work your way around, just breaking off the bits as you go. So you can hear, see here a good chunk has come off. So eventually you'll start getting to some points where it just wants to release and the whole thing will just eventually pop off together. And there you go that's all the supports removed and one of the downsides to using supports is you end up generally with a rougher surface where the supports are uh, i recommend just playing around with settings and looking online for tips and tricks for how to minimize any of the surface scarring that you get with supports and over time you'll learn better techniques these are just default settings so it can definitely be improved from here but if it's just a functional print and not needing uh, high cosmetic details then really i could still use this in my hydroponic setup
So in part three, we're going to be looking at how to connect the CFS system and start doing multicolor printing with this printer. If you have found value in this video, and I hope you have, then please consider subscribing to the channel so that you'll be notified when part three of this series is released. Thanks for watching.